Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. As you may have gathered from other videos that I have done, I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I would like today to talk about an author who is excellent but underrated within the context of Argentine letters. And as you may know, when it comes to Argentine literature, everybody has read Borges, everybody has read Cortázar. Many people may have read Bioy Casares, Sabato, others have read Saer, Puig, Piglia. Antonio Di Benedetto is just as satisfying as any of these authors, and he was praised by virtually all of them. Here's the thing, the first time that he was translated into English was in 2016, so not that long ago, with his novel Sama. Sama is, I believe, Antonio Di Benedetto's best novel. And I'm going to say more than that. Sama may well be the most important Argentine novel to look at the colonial era from 20th century eyes. The only other novel that I can think of as a worthy contestant to that title would be The Witness or El Entenado by Juan José Saer. So we are talking about a very important novel here, at least if you ask me. And the first thing that I want to look at is the issue of context. This novel appeared in the year 1956. So we're looking at a time within Argentine letters when Borges had already published Ficciones and El Aleph, which are probably his most important books of short stories. And the year before Sama was published, Marco de Nevi won the prize, a very important prize, which was the Craft Prize, with Rosaura a las 10, Rosaura at 10 o'clock, which was a bestseller, very, very important uh, novel, which was also made into a very important film, one of the best Argentine films that I have seen, actually. 1956, the year that Sama was published, was also the year that saw the appearance of Julio Cortázar's Final del Juego, End of the Game, so a very important collection of short stories by Cortázar, and also a novel by Beatriz Guido, by the title of La Caída, or The Fall. It was later made as a movie by Leopoldo Torrenilson, who was Beatriz Guido's husband. He adapted many of her stories, most of which were bestsellers, even though not many people read Beatriz Guido anymore. So this is only to give you an idea of the context. Authors like Juan José Saer, Ricardo Piglia, Aroldo Conti would begin to publish their first books the decade after, so during the 60s. This is the context in which Sama appears. And what many people will tell you, or if you look up the novel online, it will, this is something that you will find. It is part of a thematic trilogy of novels along with the Silentiary and the Suicides. Those are the other two novels that form this trilogy on the theme of waiting. So waiting is the main topic of these novels. And Sama is the only one of the three of them that is a historical novel. The Silentiary takes place in the 1950s and the Suicides in the 1960s. So it is different from the other two. Now the question is, is this really a trilogy? And I think that, you know, it's a topic for debate. I am not sure whether I consider the three novels a trilogy. Sama is definitely about waiting. The other two, I'm not so sure. You could say that all three of these novels deal with the topic of obsession. So if you look at it from that perspective, yes, I would say this is definitely a, a trilogy. But as I said, you know, it's a topic for debate. And one thing that I will tell you is this. Di Benedetto published five novels in his life, and the trilogy are the ones in the middle. The first one, El Pentagono, and the last one, Sombras Nada Más, are definitely different from the three novels that supposedly make up the trilogy. So in that sense, I think there's a case that could be made for Sama being a part of a thematic trilogy, along with The Silent Sherry and The Suicides. And in any case, one thing that you could say about all three of these novels is that they are existentialist type of stories or texts. What is Sama? Okay, a little bit about the novel. I would describe it as an attempt to describe life in the colonies as it really was. Okay, we have the central figure of Don Diego de Sama, who is hoping for a promotion. He is stationed in Asuncion, Paraguay, and he wants to be promoted. For instance, um, 
being transferred to Buenos Aires would be a really nice thing for him. He's really hoping that this will happen. And at the same time that he is hoping for this, so there you have the topic of waiting, right? The theme of waiting or the leitmotiv, if you want to look at it that way. He's also waiting for his salary. So he's much like the colonel in Gabriel Garcia Marquez's novela, um, No One Writes to the Colonel. We have also another story of waiting right there. I would say that Sama is a descriptive, reflexive, and I would say even a static novel at times, because you have this theme of waiting, right? It's like nothing really happening, nothing transcendent, at least, happening, just people waiting. So, as you can tell, if you know the work of Juan José Saer and Aroldo Conti, they are direct descendants of Antonio Di Benedetto, because they also have novels that at, at times seem to stagnate, right, and to really try your patience with the descriptions and the very, you know, detailed uh, portrayal and depiction of everyday life. Saer actually said that Di Benedetto's prose was the most original in 20th century Argentine letters. So, you know, quite a, quite a thing to say right there. Let's talk a little bit about the content and the structure of the novel. So what do you have besides waiting, right? Because clearly this is a story about waiting, but what else is there? Well, you have some petty and not so petty squabbles between the people in the colonies, some sexual adventures there, some gambling, and also quite a few or just, you know, really not, not, not that many actually, a few expeditions, especially towards the end, or at least the most important of these expeditions happens towards the end of the novel. The novel is divided into three parts, to go a little bit into the structure, and each one of these parts focuses on a specific year, okay? The first part, we have Sama's circumstances, right? The fact that he is waiting and also some sexual tension that he experiences. Then in the second part, um, Di Benedetto focuses on his relationship with a woman named Emilia. The third part deals primarily with a, an absurd expedition in search of a man called Vicuña Porto. And when they go into this expedition, they enter indigenous territory. So it's a menacing, a sense of menace there to this uh, third part of the novel. And there is continuity throughout these three parts, but something interesting is that they are deliberately disjointed. So something happens in the middle between, you know, these three parts that focus on three different years, but we have no explanation as to what happened between those years, probably because, honestly, <laughs> not much happened. This is a story about a static life in, in many ways. So that's one of the, of the things that we could read into the reason why Di Benedetto decided to leave those blank spaces between the divisions in the novel. About Di Benedetto's style, let's explore this a little bit. It is apparently simple, but it is like very polished, very precise. It has a lot of depth to it, but the style itself, the words that he uses are not complicated, and the sentence structure is not complicated either. So it's a wonderful balance right there. And Sama is the narrator of the novel, and he does not shy away from poetry and even from allegory. There are quite a few allegorical moments or reflections by him in the novel. And there are two that stood out to me. One has to do with the man. It's a very brief episode. There's a man within the novel who is writing a novel. So that's, that's something to look out for there. It's an allegorical episode. And then the other one happens towards the end of the novel. You have this group of blind people who are being led by their children, who are able to see. So, you know, the episodes in themselves are maybe not that important, but it's the way Sama re reacts to them and reflects on them and gives them an allegorical dimension. The description there is, is very beautiful, too. To talk a little bit about the protagonist, and this is, as I said before, Sama himself, I don't think we are able to, I mean, I don't think we are meant to sympathize with him. He's a very problematic figure. He is a disgusting figure in many senses, and yet he has moments of I wouldn't say greatness, right? There's no greatness involved here, but at least of some humanity. And that helps you to connect with him a little bit. I think by the end, by the time that I finished reading the novel, I was quite aware of Sama's 
shortcomings as a human being, but I also felt sorry for him. So we have that kind of situation, that kind of relationship there with the protagonist of the novel. It is just, you know, he's just a person who has lived in a, in a brutalizing circumstance and, and the conditions are just awful. If the novel is accurate, if the novel paints an accurate portrait of, of what life was like in the colonies, this was just an exasperating type of life and that has a lot to do with the reasons why Sama is the kind of person that he is. To mention a couple of film adaptations, or actually one film adaptation and one that never happened. The first time that somebody tried to adapt Sama to the screen was in 1984, and this was Nicolas Sarkis. He had adapted Palo y Hueso by Juan José Sayer many years before, and one of his movies, which is based on Dostoyevsky's um, Notes from Underground, was even sent to the Academy Awards to represent Argentina, I believe in the early 1980s. But Sarkis was not able to complete the film. Apparently it was a very difficult film to make and the project just was never finalized. But then in 2017, the year after the translation of Sama into English came out, Lucrecia Martel, one of the most famous Argentine uh, filmmakers working right now, made an adaptation of Sama. And this adaptation of Sama represented us in the Academy Awards, though it did not receive any nominations. Martel's work tends to receive a very lukewarm response from the general public, but it is praised by critics and by film buffs. So it's a very interesting situation here that many filmmakers have experienced. I like her work with some reservations. I'm not going to go into depth here, I just wanted to mention the film adaptation by her. But I think Sama, if I had to choose, I would say Sama, the film, is probably Lucrecia Martel's best work to date. There are very good performances, the cinematography is just striking, and I think overall the film does justice to the novel. And I think in this context that's a very uh, important aspect to look at. Before we finish and before we go into some, you know, general assessment of Sama, there is a connection, and I wanted to make a note about this with J.M. Kutsia, the South African author. He reviewed Sama in this volume right here titled Late Essays. It is, his review is kind of long actually, because he summarizes the novel quite a bit and he also goes into biographical information about Di Benedetto. But the review offers great insight. I highly recommend, if you're not sure whether to read Sama or not, just check out the review by J.M. Kutsia, and that will give you an idea of what you're getting into. He compares Sama to the 18th century novel of sentiment, especially in the type of language that it uses, but he also makes a connection with the 20th century theater of the absurd. So we have waiting, right? So as in waiting for Godot, maybe, this kind of thing. So I think those are very, very good and very appropriate connections to make. And ultimately, his review of Sama is a favorable one. I don't think this is surprising. I mean, both authors have been called existentialist in the texts that they have produced. And we have to remember that Kutsia, one of Kutsia's most famous novels is Waiting for the Barbarians. So you have waiting, once again, the concept of waiting. And also, you know, colonization is a big theme in both, or colonialism is a big theme in both novels. And you also have this figure of authority undergoing a crisis. So, you know, once again, it's, it's hardly surprising that Kutsia enjoyed Sama, but just something to consider when you explore this novel. So, the bottom line here. Are you interested in Latin American literature? Sama is mandatory reading. I mean, you, you just have to read it. If you have interest in Argentine or in Latin American literature, this is a novel that I would say you need to check out. The translation into English is by Esther Allen, who does a fantastic job just as she did when she translated Borges' non-fictions. Also, she translated Felisberto Hernández, short stories, amazing text, by the way, Lands of Memory, if you want to check that out. And uh, also brilliant is her translation of Rosario Castellano's Oficio de Tinieblas, which was is known in English as The Book of Lamentations. So 
fantastic job in translation here too. If I were you, I would read Sama back to back with Juan Jose Sayers' The Witness, or El Entenado, the one that I mentioned before. That would give you a fantastic, you know, contrast there between two novels, once again, from Argentina, that look at colonial era from 20th century eyes. And if you want more, I have another novel here that is another favorite of mine that you should check out. It's Alejo Carpentier's Los Pasos Perdidos, The Lost Steps. It's just an amazing novel, very well written. The sense of style that you see here is, is simply just, it takes your breath away if you read it out loud. So those are three novels, you know, that have many connections between them that I would recommend to you. Di Benedetto's other novels are also worth checking out, especially the ones that are supposedly part of that trilogy. The Silent Sherry is going to appear this year, or has appeared in English, so we, we have a, you know, a, a new novel right here that's, um, you know, soon to be published, or has already been published. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but you can check. And I'm pretty sure that The Suicides is going to follow soon, so, you know, we should be on the lookout for that. Do you have any questions, any comments, any recommendations? I always welcome them. I hope you enjoyed this video. These are just my reflections on Antonio Di Benedetto's Sama. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.